I have a long history with Dartmouth Hitchcock and Dartmouth in general. My educational background, uh, uh, grew up in New Hampshire, went to high school, Concord High School, went to college uh, at Dartmouth in the late 1990s, uh, left New Hampshire for five years to go to uh, Connecticut and went to medical school at Yale. Uh, while I was there, I spent an extra year doing biomechanics research sort of outside of the traditional curriculum, uh, then came back to Dartmouth for orthopedic residency, which was five clinical years, and then one year where I did a master's degree at TDI. Uh, then I went to Philadelphia to work uh, at Thomas Jefferson University and the Rothman Institute, uh, where I did a one-year fellowship focusing just on spine surgery and got a chance to work uh, with some of the leaders in uh, spine surgery there, uh, which is a great, great experience. Um, learned some new uh, techniques and approaches to things that I hadn't learned as a resident, uh, and now I came back. Um, to work as an attending sponsor. I think Dartmouth's truly a, it's a unique environment. It's this top-notch um, tertiary care center in a rural uh, place. It's, and that's very unique. There are very few places like that in the world. Uh, so I thought it'd be a great, great opportunity to work here. Uh, in terms of the spine center, the spine center is also a, a very unique place. Um, having trained here, I sort of took for granted the way we approach spine care. And then when I went off to my fellowship and have seen uh, the way they do it other places, you realize how uh, different it, spine care at Dartmouth is. It's one of the few places that's uh, very multidisciplinary in our approach to the spine. Uh, for example, the Spine Center, uh, we have orthopedic surgeons, neurosurgeons, uh, pain specialists, um, physical therapists, uh, a whole variety of people who care for the spine all under one roof, which is a, a great opportunity for patients rather than having to go to one office to the next to the next. It's basically one-stop shopping for the spine. Uh, and the nice thing is that we have an answer for almost every spine patient who walks in the door. And uh, luckily, the answer for most patients is not surgery, but at the same time, when it's not surgery, we have the non-operative treatment available here. You don't have to go elsewhere. So most uh, orthopedic and neurosurgical practices uh, are set up to offer surgery. They don't necessarily provide the non-operative treatments such as therapy, uh, injections, medical management, uh, and so on. So if you go to see an orthopedic surgeon or a neurosurgeon uh, and they decide that surgery is not for you, they oftentimes don't have an answer. Luckily for patients, it, it turns out that the vast majority don't need surgery for their spine problem. Um, and at the Spine Center, we're aware of that. We have non-operative treatment available along with uh, surgery. Many decades ago, Jim Weinstein and many of his colleagues in spine around the country uh, got together and realized there was not strong evidence uh, behind surgery for most spine problems. Uh, and as a result, they decided to, to do SPORT, right? again, the Spine Patient Outcomes Research Trial. Uh, what that trial was, uh, basically compared surgical to non-operative outcomes for the, the three most common uh, lumbar spine disorders, which are disc herniation, spinal stenosis, and degenerative spondylolisthesis. The latter is when one vertebra slides forward relative to the one below. Um, and what they did is they both, uh, they did a randomized trial where people flipped a coin basically and either got surgery or non-operative care, or the patients chose surgery or non-operative care, and then they compared the, the outcomes. And as it turned out for all three disorders, uh, surgery was very much favored. Um, and again, coming from Dartmouth, a place where we oftentimes uh, suggest non-operative care, at least initially, uh, some people were surprised that this was the, the outcomes of this uh, study. But I think the, the key to the, the fact that surgery did better than non-operative treatment was that we had a very strict inclusion criteria. So in other words, if you had, in order to get into the disc herniation arm of this study, you needed to have a disc herniation, you needed to have symptoms down your leg for at least six weeks, and you had to have imaging consistent with your symptoms. We're not talking about people who just have a disc bulge and some back pain. These are people who have clear, uh, ridiculous symptoms or pain going down their leg and a disc herniation that goes along with it. And what sport showed is that if you have that problem and your symptoms persist at least six weeks, then there's a definite benefit from surgery, and that benefit lasts right out to four years. Uh, likewise, for spinal stenosis and degenerative spondylolisthesis, uh, surgery had an advantage out to four years, again, for only patients who met very strict inclusion criteria. Um, so I think if, if you want to look at sport uh, and take one message away from it, it is that uh, when surgery is indicated, 
uh, the results are very good, um, and they're, it's favored over non-operative treatment. Uh, however, probably 90% of patients with back problems would not meet those inclusion criteria and are probably better off treated without surgery. We're trying to develop tools to work on individualized outcome uh, predictions so that we can predict how a patient's going to do both with surgery and non-operative treatment. Uh, that more advanced uh, type of modeling is still at a research stage. We're working with the statisticians to create these individualized models. It's great to be back uh, in New Hampshire, both for personal reasons, uh, having grown up here and having family nearby, uh, and uh, professionally, it's an incredible place to get to work. Very few places uh, can you be sitting at your desk, um, poring over data and doing research, and then walk across the hall to the clinic, and then use the, the things that you found from that research to directly influence how you take care of patients. So it's a, it's a very uh, uh, interesting opportunity and allows you to, to go from the research realm directly to the clinical realm uh, without a, a large gap between the two, which has traditionally been what, what exists in medicine.